everybody, or whenever you'll be watching this, it's uh, Monday, November 2nd. For us, we celebrate we call All Souls Day. I read from Romans chapter 6, beginning of verse 3. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We are indeed buried with him and through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All Souls Day. It's sort of, I guess, peculiar for Catholics to pray for those who have died. Typically, usually other Christian denominations do not have that practice. And we just say that, you know, with God there is no time. There's no past. There's no future. Everything is present. And so we pray for the dead. It's, only, it's really, I mean, let's say you, you know, someone died a couple of years ago. You pray for, you can pray for them now and being that there's no time, those prayers can be actually be assisting that person at the moment of death, you know. And I believe to pray for the dead, because really what, when we pray for the dead, it's really expressing our love, that Allah has no death to our love. That my mom, my wife, my husband, my wife, or whoever it may be, have gone, but I have not forgotten them. And so my prayer, my praying for them, really is speaking of my love for them, for that love will not die, and bring, it calls to mind. It's, my, it's a spiritual connection that we have with them, it's our spiritual connection, the way we communicate with them. You know, I say Mass was always a Mass intention, and I never really initially had a significance of it. I just read names, and some I knew, some I you know, don't know, most I don't probably. But I just recall the one thing that really struck me was, oh, I, 20 years ago, I guess, by it's about now, maybe a little bit more, with my uncle, Uncle Fred, my Aunt Wynne died, and I was visiting him. He lived in St. Petersburg and spent the night. And the next morning we went to church together. And that morning, uh, he, the mass intention was for his wife, my Aunt Wynne. And so, mass, as you know, the attend mass went fine, the gospel, the homily, and then the prayer of the faithful. And at the prayer of the faithful, it's when they announced their intentions. And it said, let's remember in a special way at this mass, the soul of Wynne Pasito. And as soon as the priest said that, I saw the corner of my eye, my Uncle Fred, he sort of just reacted to that, you know. It's like hearing his wife's name, it just, you know, he felt it and his eye got a little, a little bit teary-eyed to hear his wife's name once again. And so he was connected in prayer, remembering his wife, and that's why we pray for the dead, we pray for God's mercy. Because we pray, we believe there is a purgatory, again, that's probably the cure to Catholics, but there's... You know, this heaven, hell, of course, and you don't have a second chance in life. How you live here is it. Purgatory is not a second chance. But really, it's getting cleansed. And how that takes place, how long that takes place, there is no time, so it's hard to explain. But we know people, I know so many people who have died, and they had unforgiveness. I mean, really unforgiveness. Anger. Sometimes even a hatred towards someone else. For their life, they had other feelings of sinfulness, right? And they die. I guess we don't, human way thinking, we don't think they deserve to be in hell. But you really think they could go in heaven holding out to those, you know, unforgiveness, that hatred? Something has to be cleansed because that nothing imperfect can be with God. So we believe purgatory is the purging and our prayers accompany them that they may be cleansed and made pure. It could be in the blink of an eye. We, I, we don't know. Okay? But I, I recommend praying for those you love. If nothing else, it connects you, keeps them alive in your heart. Because we know love never dies as well. God bless you.